Hello Year 10, welcome to this lesson on uh, the rules for resistors in series and parallel circuits. Uh, you should have done the starter task already or your teacher will be doing that during the lesson. So please make sure you've um, completed the starter activity before going through this video. Okay, so just a quick recap, re recall of, of what we mean by resistance. So we should remember that resistance of an electrical component is a measure of how difficult it is for the electrons to pass through the atoms that are vibrating in a metal component. So if we think about a filament in a light bulb, okay, which is made of metal, as that uh, current passes through there, they, it starts it transfers energy to that filament the electrons in that uh, sorry the atoms in that filament start to vibrate faster and therefore start to cause resistance to stopping the electrons flowing and that then heats up the uh, the bulb so and that increases the resistance and we remember if we re so we, we calculate resistance we define resistance as the potential difference across a component divided by the current that is being passed through that component. Okay, and we measure it in ohms, if we remember that weird thing, ohms. So for a given potential difference, the larger the resistance, the smaller the current. If we remember, they are proportional. Okay, so as we increase resistance, we decrease current. So we're gonna look at series and parallel circuits. Okay, so let's think about resistance rules in series circuits first of all. Okay, now here we've got a typical um, series circuit. We have a 1.5 volt battery, we have a bulb, and we have a variable resistor. Okay, we have a voltmeter V1 across the bulb. So here, this is measuring the voltage across the bulb. And we have V2, the voltmeter, measuring the, ver um, the, the voltage across the variable resistor. Okay. So if we look, uh, if we have our variable resistor completely open, okay, offering no resistance, we have um, we have no so no voltage across that. Sorry, no voltage across that um, variable resistor at all. Okay, so it's completely closed. All of the voltage is across the potential different. Uh, all of the potential difference, sorry, is across the lamp. We have that full voltage, 1.5 volts from the battery across that bulb and nothing being able to pass across the, uh, the variable resistor. If, however, we increase the voltage across the variable resistor, it decreases the voltage across the filament lamp and it will dim the lamp, therefore. Okay, and what we should be able to see is that there is some consistency here. So let's look at this data in a little bit more detail. So if, suppose, our current through this bulb is 0.1 amps. Let's assume that the current through our bulb is 0.1 amps. Okay. Now, when the bulb is dim, so let's take this middle reading. Okay. When the bulb is dim, we know that there is 0.9 volts across that bulb. So to work out the resistance, I'm just going to pop up our equation here so that we can remember the critical equation that we are using, which is V equals I R. Okay, so to work out resistance, we're going to need to work out voltage divided by current. Okay, so for this situation here where the bulb is dim, the resistance is going to equal 0.9 divided by 0.1 and it's going to equal 9 ohms. Okay, so the resistance there is going to be 9 ohms. Now at this same setting the resistance across the variable resistor it's going to be slightly different, obviously, so we can work that out as well. This time it's 0.6 divided by 0.1 equals 6 ohms. 
So our resistance across the variable resistor is 6 ohms. Now if we were to replace these two components with one single component, okay, with a single resistor, then at the same, if we didn't change anything else, okay, to have the same current flowing through there, the resistor would be R1 plus R2. So we'll call this one R1, we'll call this one R2, and that will give us a total resistance of 15 ohms. Okay, so 15 ohms would be our total resistance. So to replace these two components with one resistor, it would need to be a 15 ohm resistor in order to maintain the same current. Okay, so what we're saying is the resistance is the sum of the resistance of the to two components. So the total resistance in a circuit is the sum of, the of all of the resistors. Okay, and that is true for any series circuit. So let's just look at that in a bit more detail. I'd like you to write down this key rule here. This is our first rule. So the total resistance of two or more components in series is equal to the sum of the resistance of each component. And let's look at that here. So we're going to call this RT. Okay. RT is re total resistance. RT is going to equal R1 plus, in this case, R2 plus R3. So therefore, we're just going to replace the numbers. Not sure why this is not letting me draw. Apologies. Ten ohms plus twenty ohms plus ten. So R T here in this in this circuit is going to equal forty ohms. Our total resistance is forty ohms, and we know that we don't need to know the current or the potential difference if we are given those resistors. Okay. So just to explain what that looks like. So as we add more resistors in series, this increases the total resistance of the circuit. This is because the potential difference, as we know, is shared between more resistors. So the potential difference here, let's assume that the potential difference of this battery is 4.5 volts. That's going to be shared between these resistors. Okay. As a result, the potential difference across each of them is less than before. So as if there was only two resistors, 4.5 volts would be shared between the two of them. As we add another one, obviously they get less potential difference. Okay, And therefore the current through those resistors is less as well. They're getting less energy, so there is less potential difference. Okay, And therefore less current. Um, the total potential difference, remember, is unchanged. We're not doing anything different here. So the total resistance is therefore greater. The total resistance is increasing. Okay, so that's the key thing. So pause this video here to have a read through that. Take any more notes that you want. Okay, let's look at parallel circuits now. Okay, so parallel circuits are a little bit more complex. We've got here our variable resistor. Okay, we've got our battery or cell, and we've got... Uh, an ammeter reading here, which is A1, which is this one here, okay, and then we've got a parallel branch here, two branches running in parallel with two bulbs, A2 and A3, okay, so A2 and A3. Now, the first thing to notice here, guys, is that the reading for A1, okay, in each case is equal to A2 plus A3. Okay. So the first point is that the total current through the whole circuit is the sum of the currents through the separate branches. 
Okay, that is the key thing. Now, with those in parallel, okay, we will know also if we put a voltmeter across here and a voltmeter across here and a voltmeter across here. So I'm just going to add in my voltmeters. That the readings for all these are going to be the same. So V1 will be the same as V2 will be the same as V3. So V1 equals V2 equals V3. Okay, because potential difference does not change. They have, so components in parallel have the same potential difference across them. Okay, the current depends on the resistance of the component. It's not dependent on the potential difference. It's dependent on the resistance. The resistance is the thing that's changing here. So the bigger the resistance, the smaller the current. Okay, the component with the biggest resistance passes the smaller current. So we can calculate resistance, obviously, in parallel, um, quite simply here. By let's just assume that this is a um, let's assume that this is a 4.5 volt battery okay therefore we know that this is 4.5 and this is 4.5 we can do a few little calculations we can work out resistance so the resistance across bulb one let's call this one bulb one and this one bulb two okay uh, we know that so resistance equals voltage divided by current. So for bulb one, we're saying that the voltage is 4.5. The current, A2, is 0 0.3. Therefore, our resistance is 15 ohms. Now, for bulb 2, we've got 4.5 volts still, so the same potential difference. Don't quite know why this is not working. Uh, this time we've got a current of 0 0.2 and that gives us a resistance of 22.5. Okay. But let's work out the total resistance. Okay, A1. So total resistance here, I'm going to call it RT again. Again, equals 4.5 divided by 0 0.5, which is our reading from A1 up here. Okay. And we can see here that our total resistance is only 9 ohms. Okay. So the key thing here is that the total resistance through a parallel circuit is it is smaller than the smallest the lowest resistance of any of the resistors okay so let's explain that here's our key rule that I'd like you to write down again so the total resistance the total resistance of two or more components in parallel is less than the resistance of the resistor with the least resistance okay so that's a kind of a key thing that we need to remember the total resistance is, is less than the resistance of the resistor with the least resistance lots of words there that sound similar total resistance is less than the resistance of the resistor with the least resistance okay now 
underneath there's an explanation here. It's very wordy. I'm not going to read through it. I'd like you to pause, take a moment to read through that. OK, um, as you're doing, I'm also going to kind of give you an example here um, using this calculation. So we can see here that just as a quick example, we've got uh, through our first resistor, R1, we can work out the current through our, our I1. So six amps, I2, is three amps, I3, is a one amp, because it's six divided by six, okay? And that means we can work out the total resistance here OK, remember from our rules that our, the total current, so I total, is going to equal I1 plus I2 plus I3. OK, so all of those together. So therefore, IT equals 10 amps. And our total resistance, therefore, total resistance here equals uh, 6 divided by 10 equals 0. 0.8. 6 ohms. So we can see just by doing some calculations what that we're proving this rule, okay? That our total resistance is always less than even the lowest resistance, okay? So here's a worked example to consolidate that understanding. I'm going to show you a different way of calculating total resistance without knowing current or potential difference, okay? So what we can, as, as, as well as, um, if you recall series circuits, we said that RT equals R1 plus R2 plus R3. We can use something similar but slightly different to work out the total resistance in a parallel circuit. And what we can say is that 1 over RT, so reciprocal of the total resistance, is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, etc. OK, so therefore 1 over RT in this case, so that should be a small t, is 1 over 500 plus 1 over 500 plus 1 over 500. What that means is that 1 over RT equals 6 times 10 to the minus 3. And what that means is that the, res the actual resistance, the total resistance, is 1 over 6 times 10 to the minus 3, which equals 167 ohms. OK, so the total resistance of this circuit is 167 ohms. If the current in each branch is 20 milliamps, what is the supply voltage in this circuit? Well, what we can say is that, that using V equals IR, okay, we can work out that V equals 20 times 10 to the minus 3. So times 500, OK? Remember that 20 times 10 to the minus 3 is 20 milliamps, times the 500, 
So V would equal 10 volts. Okay. Right. Feel free to go back and watch any of this that has, uh, because it's quite complex, if there's anything you want to explain any further. Um, your independent task now is to complete the Isaac physics assignment that has been set for you for this lesson. Okay, so the link for that is on the Padlet and you should be able to go into Isaac physics. If you've not yet made an account, you need to do that first um, and then you need to complete the assignment that has been set for you. Good luck and see you soon.